Did you know that there's a kind of tumor that can actually secrete adrenaline and cause periodic episodes of headaches, anxiety, palpitations, sweating, and episodes of high blood pressure? Yesterday, I presented the case of a 46-year-old female who had those exact symptoms and came to my office. She had a palpable neck mass on the side of her neck, and I showed this MRI that confirmed that she had a tumor right here. And her eyes looked like this. What is the diagnosis? I was actually surprised at the number of people that guessed incorrectly on this one, so I'm really excited to go through this diagnosis so you can learn something new. She has a carotid body tumor, or also called a paraganglioma. They're also called glomus tumors, and they're a type of neuroendocrine tumor, and most often they're completely benign. Parotid body paragangliomas are the most common type of paraganglioma in the head and neck, and they account for about 60% of the cases. They're slow growing tumors, usually painless on the side of the neck. They're laterally mobile, meaning that you can move them from side to side, but they're not vertically mobile, so you can't move them up and down. And that's because of where they're located against the carotid artery. The carotid artery does not move up and down, but can move side to side, and that's called Fontaine sign. They're usually diagnosed between ages 40 and 70, with the average age being around 57. These tumors originate at the carotid body, which is located where the external and internal carotid artery branch, which is right about here or right here on your neck. Many of you guess this could possibly be a thyroid issue, but remember the thyroid is right here. What's up with all these yellow things that are encasing the carotid artery? They're all different nerves that live in this area, and as the tumor grows, it can compress some of these nerves, which will cause a variety of symptoms. If it compresses the recurrent laryngeal nerve, the patient can have hoarseness. Compression of the vagus nerve will cause headaches and dizziness, and compression of the sympathetic Pathetic plexus will cause this. This is Horner syndrome, which is very different than the eyes that you will see with a patient with Graves' disease. Hyperthyroidism or Graves' disease, it will cause the tissues behind the eyes to swell, giving them the bugged out appearance. In Horner syndrome, you'll have a drooping eyelid and a constricted pupil on the affected side, as well as an absence of sweating on that side. This is due to a disruption in the sympathetic innervation of that side of the face. And remember, our sympathetic nervous system gives us adrenaline, which makes your eyes wide open, your eyes dilated, and you cause sweating. So this patient can't have that flight or fight response. Most of the time, these tumors are only located on one side, but you can have bilateral paragangliomas in about 18% of patients. They are very vascular tumors, so they vividly enhance on MRI or CT, and they are typically in between the external and internal carotid. This is called the liar sign, where you have the internal and external carotid that are split apart by this tumor. Chamblin classification is how we identify how involved these tumors are around the carotid arteries. No encasement would be a classification one. This is a partial encasement, so this is a Chamblin class two, and a complete encasement is a Chamblin class three. This will help us stratify the risk of surgery and its potential complications. As mentioned in the introduction, some of these tumors actually secrete catecholamines or adrenaline-like substances, and we want to identify which one of those tumors are secreting before we begin any treatment. We can do blood and urine tests to test how much catecholamines is there to see if it's elevated and if the tumor may be secreting. Hemogranin A, a tumor marker, may also be elevated in this type of tumor. Remember, most of these are not secreting tumors, so the blood test may not be positive, and they're usually painless. If you ever have a patient with a painless pulsatile mass on the side of the neck, think it could be a possible carotid body tumor or paraganglioma. So what's the treatment? If they are secreting tumors, they usually need to be treated with medications up front to lower the risk of adrenaline secretion during surgery, which could cause a massive rise in the blood pressure. This may include alpha blockers, beta blockers, or calcium channel blockers. Based on the Shamblin classification, we will decide if surgery is possible. Remember, in most cases, surgery is curative, so we wanna to try to remove as much of the mass as possible. They are hypervascular tumors, so they have a lot of blood going to them, and occasionally we will embolize them preoperatively, and here you can see where the blood supply was cut off before surgery, which will make resection safer. If they're too big, sometimes radiation is recommended. Our patient underwent preoperative embolization followed by complete surgical resection by one of our vascular surgeons. And now she is cured. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care 
Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case and hopefully you guys learned something this week.